Well, howdy friends, Brian Flesick here from Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome to another one of our fly tying tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to tie the plantation crab, which is uh, a fly that came about, I'd say about six years ago or so. And the story is, of course, it involves cocktails. But we were sitting around with our, our group down at the Woodland Plantation in southern Louisiana, uh, which, by the way, is one of my favorite places in the world to be. But we were sitting around one night, of course, at Spirits Hall there at Woodland Plantation and, and having a few cocktails. and. Um, I, I had been throwing some crab patterns that, that I wasn't overly thrilled with and needless to say the fish weren't overly thrilled with so I went back to the drawing board and uh, lo and behold that evening we came up with a crab pattern that I took out the next couple of days and it turned out that the fish just absolutely devoured the thing and uh, we wound up naming, the, naming it the plantation crab with the help of uh, Foster Capel from uh, Woodland there um, and since then this fly has really become famous down in South Louisiana. Um, the guides are constantly calling me up and ordering this fly. I can't hardly keep up with uh, keeping us in stock. Um, but we've been selling it here in the shop, and of course it's a staple on our trips to southern Louisiana for redfish. But they just womp on this thing. It's uh, really amazing. And I hesitate to say that I invented this fly because I'm sure I copied it off of something. Uh, and like I said, it involved cocktails, so I can't take too much credit for it. But anyways, um, I'm going to show you the woodland plantation crab and um, uh, pretty simple fly to tie. Uh, but there's, there's a couple trip, tricks and uh, tips that uh, I should be able to show you here. So first of all, we're using the Gamakatsu hook, the sl 11 h I believe it is. Um, and I tie this on a one knot. Uh, and of course, this is, is any Gamagatsu hook. This thing is just uh, ballistic. I mean, you can't, uh, you're never going to break this hook. And one of the things that we discovered when I was first doing this fly and I would send it down to the guides, a couple of them kind of in, in a nice way told me that after a couple of fish, the fly would start to rotate, would start to twist around the hook. So I remembered back to a trick that Dave Whitlock showed us here when we, he was here at Mad River Outfitters, one of the many times he's been here. And, and uh, Dave used to score a hook um, to keep it from uh, things from rotating around the hook shank. So I got out my trusty old file, and you don't any kind of file will work. Um, a standard hook file usually doesn't have um, rough edges, and I like these. Uh, kind of the, the corners on this thing, but I am literally going to score the heck out of this hook. Okay, and I, I try to do it from about four different angles so I, I get it really good, and I, I really try to dig in there. So I'm going to score this up really good, and I really, really concentrate on just behind the eye of the hook. What that does is, um, you know, you're most likely to rotate this thing uh, where we install the lead eyes, or I can also use bead chain eyes on this fly, but most of the big redfish that we're catching are in, in uh, deeper water, so I'm almost always throwing the lead eye version of this. I'll go through and I'll score up a dozen or however many I'm, I'm looking to do. Um, that way I kind of get that step out of the way, set them aside, and off I go. But We'll just do that one for now. And then what I do is I go ahead and coat uh, the hook shank with a layer of thread, okay? And I'm using flat wax nylon. For those of you that have seen me tie before, you know that I love flat wax nylon. And I can't even really tell you why. I probably started tying with it when I was a kid and have just always stuck with it. So now is when the uh, click glasses come up. Whoa, there we go. And I'm going to start right behind the eye. And I don't, uh, I don't want these wraps to be absolutely one up against another. So I leave a little gap. I mean, it's not critical. And then, of course, as with most flies, you're going to bring it till it's even with the barb. Come in with my standard, my standard scissors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of spiral back the other direction kind of creating a crisscross 
And I think what this does, this really lays a great foundation. And now I'm going to take my zappa gap and I'm going to put a thin thread of zappa gap right along that hook shank. And then as that's kind of setting up a little bit, I'm going to take my basic lead eye. I use these painted lead eyes. I think we get these from Wapsie. Uh, it's a chartreuse, and this is the medium size. Uh, the medium size is just perfect, just the right amount of weight for, for getting this down. And I'm going to go ahead and ins install this right behind the eye. Okay, I'm going to make about three turns, three turns, and you're kind of figure eighting. Now I'm going to come forward towards me there, three turns and then come this direction. So I've now figure eight it around that eye, each different direction, okay? And then I'm gonna come around the base of the eye to kind of tighten up all of those wraps there. No set number of wraps, you know, just kind of two or three wraps, two or three wraps in each direction. So you get that good and figure eighted in there. And then I come around the base of the eye okay which is on top of the hook shank and what that does is kind of tightens all those wraps and, and gets it in there now i'm going to take another drop of zappa gap i'm going to put it on right on top of that hook eye make sure it kind of seeps down to the hook shank and now i'm going to put even more wraps one two three one two three one, two, three, this direction, one, two, three, this direction. I hit all the directions and again around the base. One of the reasons why I like using the flat wax nylon is it's pretty strong and it's, it's sufficient for big game flies like this, but uh, it's, it doesn't add a lot of bulk at all. So I can add a lot of wraps. Uh, and whereas if I was using um, like big game thread from Uni, or some of the others, if I put that many wraps around there, it's gonna create way too much bulk and, and I wouldn't be able to get that number of wraps in that amount of space. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take my thread back and through and you'll kind of see the zappa gap kind of bulging up in between the wraps. <clears throat> and now I've got a pretty solid base and what I've done is I've glued, basically glued the thread to that scored hook shank and that alone is going to prevent this from rotating when i'm done with these flies now with those preliminary steps you're really hard pressed to go in and twist that thing at all okay and um, uh, it really makes a big difference in the durability of these flies so now we're going to start on the tail and the tail has about let me think one two three four different components um, i'm going to use um, uh, let's see, this is Finn Raccoon. You can also use Arctic Fox, but I really like the Finn Raccoon. And there is, <clears throat> there is none better, if you can afford it, the Finn Raccoon from Pro Sport Fisher or the Pro Tube folks. Their Arctic Fox and their Finn Raccoon is by far the best you can buy. These patches are just absolutely beautiful. Um, but to Wapsie always, or excuse me, Hairline Dubbin also sells uh, fin raccoon zonker strips you can use those um, the arctic fox works well but the fin raccoon tends to have a little bit more sheen to it a little bit more guard hairs which i like which uh, creates this really neat impression on this tail i'm also using um, barred and speckled crazy legs and i use the orange color that's from hairline dubbin i'm going to add a little bit of flashaboo into the tail and then we're going to top that off with some light olive marabou. It's not your dark sculpin olive, but the, uh, the light olive marabou is going to be the topper to this, um, which is, you know, kind of, it adds a really neat effect into this tail. So back come the clicks and I'm going to, I'm going to grab the scientific amount of a big old bunch a big old bunch of Arctic Fox there. And I probably want it to be somewhere around twice the length of the hook shank. And you can kind of see that the guard, I'm counting these guard hairs. And these guard hairs are really pretty sexy. They, they add a lot to the back end of this fly. They add a lot to the movement of the back end of this fly. And then what I do is I get that measurement 
and I'm going to take my synthetic scissors from Dr. Slick. These are, I use these scissors for virtually everything that I do. I'll pull out some of the under fur there. And I've cut it such that when I hold this bunch now, this inside my hand there should be the proper length of the tail. And now I'm going to utilize this little bunch that's out front. That should pretty much be the distance from the barb to the point. And that's what I'm going to use as the tie-in point for my tail. So I'm, I'm going to wrap this forward, of course, using your pinch method. And I'm going to wrap it right up to about where the point of the hook is. So my thread should be even with the point of the hook. So I've just wrapped that forward. And now I can wrap my thread back over top of it. And there, that part of the tail is on. You can kind of finagle it a little bit to get it to behave just right. And again, you want to be fairly generous with this. This really needs to be a bulky, kind of puffy tail on this thing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> with normal tails, I would usually leave the thread right there and then tie in my next bunch. But we're going to do a, a kind of a cool little trick with our next step which is the barred and speckled, the crazy legs. Um, I'm going to take this bunch and I'm going to cut three of the, the legs off. And I cut them right there where they at they're attached at that end. And then I'm going to cut them right here where they're attached at this end. And I take all three legs at once. And what I'm going to do is come under the underside of the hook shank and then fold them up under the hook shank as such. And then what I'm going to do is with the this is why we brought the thread forward like that I'm going to make that first turn and that kind of secures them in make a second turn okay and now as I wrap the thread back I can separate them I'm pinching between my thumb and my index and I'm pinching between my middle finger and my ring finger and I just kind of laid them over top laid them along the sides I'm holding them in place, and by these uh, subsequent wraps of thread, I'm now wrapping back to the barb, and that puts those legs right in place on the side of the hook shank. I've seen a lot of people try that style of technique, and they wind up trying to put three legs on this side, trying to put three legs on that side, and it winds up being a hassle, and it's an extra step or two. So you just got the legs in position all in one simple step. Fold it underside the hook shank, secure it with a couple of wraps, then position the legs so that they're on the sides, okay, and then you get them nice and in position, and they're, they're hanging down and should be pretty easily proportioned. So now I'm going to take some Flashaboo. Uh, those of you that have seen me work with Crystal Flash or Flashaboo, you've seen this before. Uh, when I buy a pack of, of Flashaboo, I'm going to come in on the package, this is a brand new package, I just grabbed it off the shelf, and I'm going to cut a little triangle here. I may sacrifice a few strands when I cut that initial triangle, but I can usually reach in and, and, and grab it out. So what happens is, instead of pulling this out of the package, and for those of you that have messed with this, when you pull flash boot out of a package, trying to get it back in the package, first of all, is a nightmare. And then if you leave it laying around, it's going to get all tangled up. So this cutting a little triangle there in this package of Flashaboo allows me to simply, I can reach in with my scissor points and I can grab just the right amount, pull it out, voila, easy, and uh, I never have to pull this out of the package. Okay. So I usually like to do somewhere around four to six. Uh, to be honest with you, I typically don't count. Um, I'm probably somewhere around four to six strands and I cut that and now we're going to do a similar technique on putting the flashaboo in. Okay, let's remember that we've put in our rubber legs and we've wrapped back and the thread is hanging at the bend of the hook or directly above the barb. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay one bunch on the, on the side 
running parallel with those rubber legs, basically. Okay, and I want this to be long enough. I actually want this to extend a little bit further. I want it to be a little bit longer than the length of the uh, fin raccoon that I used. So once I get that into position, I can switch hands, throw my thread over a few times. One, get these out of the way. Two, three, four. Now I've just wrapped up to the point, and now I'm going to take the rest of this bunch, which is here, I'm going to fold it over to the other side, and now, similar technique to what I did before, I position it. Notice I'm kind of pulling it into position so it runs parallel with the hook shank here. And now I can make a cut so that those strands are even. And just again, I took what a lot of people might make into two steps where you're laying a bunch on this side, laying a bunch on this side. Not a lot of fun. I just put that whole piece in and, and laid it all back. Okay. So now I've got that kind of uh, saltwater or antenna crabby looking stuff uh, on each side of that that kind of blends into the tail. And then my last step on the tail is I'm going to add some marabou. And I just take a, uh, a plume of marabou here. And you want it to be about similar, similar in diameter or say or bulk to the Arctic fox or the fin raccoon that you tie it in. But I want this to be a little bit shorter. This winds up kind of being a dark back um, like you would do with the bait fish. I want it to be a little bit shorter so it tapers real nice into that tail. And then I'm simply going to wrap the thread. One thing I can do here is actually cut that like we did with the fin raccoon. Sorry, I forgot that. And then I shouldn't have to trim it uh, when it's there on the hook. And I tie that right on top. Okay, so now we're going to finish up this tail section with the uh, Enrico Puglisi tarantula brush. Um, and, and man, I just love this stuff. I'm using it for all kinds of stuff. But it's a synthetic uh, brush material that has the little uh, micro rubber legs in it. It's just so cool. It adds such a bugginess to this fly or any fly for that matter. Um, so I just take a hank of that. My thread again is back at the bend. Uh, where the tail starts and what basically what we're going to do is we're going to cover this distance between the bend of the hook and the point of the hook this is all going to be covered up now with the tarantula brush okay so I tie it in by the core and then I'm going to wrap my thread forward and you're going to notice that you got a little you got a little hump there where you've tied in the fin raccoon the rubber legs the uh, flashaboo and the marabou and I'm going to go ahead and take that thread one wrap in front of that little hump okay so I'm going to fill up that space and then the final wrap that I make with this tarantula brush will kind of fall off the hump so to speak and that's where I can finish this off okay so real easy and what I do when I'm wrapping this stuff you're going to wrap it just like hackle but we're going to go one turn in front of the other but really important for each wrap as soon as I go around the hook shank with this I take my my index finger and my middle finger and I stroke all the fibers and those little those sexy little rubber legs I stroke them all backwards so that each successive wrap that I make doesn't then lay those down or trap them okay I'm still gonna come in with my scissor points after I get this finished and then also, as I'm going, I'll kind of fluff it out. Just make sure that those rubber legs aren't getting trapped in there. Now, stroke it out of the way and give yourself a nice clean shot at making the next wrap. So I stroke them out of the way, I make my wrap, and then I come in and kind of fluff it out. I usually wind up with, I mean, this is going to vary 
you know, no, no two flies are, are going to be tied exactly the same, but I usually wind up with somewhere around five or six wraps of the tarantula legs. Now fluff it out, make sure those legs are sticking out. Okay, and there's my last wrap, which just kind of fell off the hump there. And now I'm gonna bring that forward. And now I can take my thread using my left hand and throw it over the hook shank. I usually like to get about three wraps in there. Get it nice and tight. Let's give another one. And then I can come in again with my synthetic scissors. These things will cut virtually anything. I don't mind cutting that wire core of the um, Enrico's brush, tarantula brush here. I don't want to cut that wire core with my good, with my good scissors, my fine point scissors. Okay, so that is basically the tail section. I'm going to put another couple security wraps, and I'm just looking at the my um, kind of spacing on this and I wanted to thread a little bit further back and that's nice and fluffy. If you see some rubber legs that are kind of trapped in there, you want you might want to rotate your vise, kind of look around, and I can use my scissor points to just kind of dig in there and fluff that out. But man, that's looking good. When you see this thing close up, you're going to see those little rubber legs. Man, they're just awesome. And when you see it in the water, they're just going like, they're, 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 these rubber legs, they're speaking to redfish. They're saying, come, come, come. It's really cool. Okay. Um, really, the last material that we're going to use on this fly is the EP, Enrico Puglisi. Uh, I use the 3D fibers. Um, the, the standard EP fibers, but in the 3D, they've got some variation in the color, not just straight up olive or tan. But, and the ones that I use are um, the 3D, the eel green is the color that I, I do. And then the alternating color is called sand. Okay. And this stuff uh, was always for me a pain in the butt to work with. And if, if I stashed it in my tie-in bag in between or left it on my fly tie-in bench, um, you know, either the cat would come and get it and it's all over the place. Or if you pull it out of your bag or, again, trying to get it back in this bag, you don't want to mess with this. So uh, this is not brain surgery, but I came up with uh, a good old rubber band, a nice stout rubber band. And what you're going to do is I just pull this out of the package pull the staple, and then I pull the entire bunch out of the package. And try not to do what I just did, which is get the fibers all out of line, not a big deal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, the end of the bunch, and I'm going to take this rubber band and just start to put wraps around there. I don't know, about five or six wraps usually does it for me. And so now I've got this hank. We'll get that out of the way. I've got this hank of the EP fiber, and it's not coming apart. I can reach in and grab just the amount that I want, um, and you're not, it's not all falling apart on you. I've had a, tons of people complain that the you wind up wasting so much because it, it comes out in strands. So we'll do that with the other one here. I just happened to grab fresh packs off the shelves here today. And again, just grab the very end of it. And there I've got my nice little hank of EP fiber. Much easier to work with. And when I put it in, especially when I'm traveling, and I put it in my fly tie and kit bag, my travel bag, it doesn't wind up all coming apart. And you can never get that stuff married back together. So, so there you go. That's kind of a cool little trick, I think. And then I'm going to take, um, take a strand, some strands. 
I'm going to grab a bunch and I'm going to say I'm going to say about half to three quarters of the diameter of a pencil somewhere like that if you kind of leave it loose it might be about the diameter of a pencil and I'm going to just go ahead and cut that bunch right off close to the rubber band okay and that's going to help you conserve and then I'm going to take uh, and cut a piece of this I'd say approximately two inches okay and this is going to be the first bunch that I tie in and many of you you've seen this technique before this is a uh, tarpon toad a tarpon toad uses this same kind of technique um, the old what's the original one the uh, oh the, uh, the I can't think of it but the crab pattern the original um, permit crab pattern uh, Del Brown's permit crab whatever but you're gonna take this bunch <clears throat> and now we're gonna lay it uh, right across the top of the hook shank okay and then I'm gonna take one kind of a loose wrap holding it in place do another wrap boom and if I need to kind of reposition it and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down real real tight I'm gonna sweep it back out of the way and go ahead and take a few turns right in front and I've just laid that going uh, crossways but right on top of the hook shank and now what we're gonna do is just alternate that process we're going to go the eel green the sand eel green sand and we try to wind up with eel green <clears throat> I start with the green and I try to end with the green um, just to give you that contrast uh, between the tarantula brush and then also here the contrast with the eye and you can really you'd be amazed at how much of this you can squeeze in notice that I left this laying right here on the base of my vise you don't want you know you don't want it laying around to where it's going to get messed up and you wind up um, messing up the fibers and they get all tangled so I'll take a, an equal bunch of the tan you want to try to keep these as equal as possible take an equal bunch of the tan cut it close to the rubber band cut my approximately two inch piece doesn't have to be perfect and I'm going to repeat that process I'm going to lay it right in front of the olive and then I'm going to go one turn two turn now when I'm doing this at this stage you're trying to get your thread you're trying to get your thread right in between the olive and the tan okay it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you just get a cleaner finish you get a cleaner top and a cleaner underside when you go to glue this thing so I'm trying to just get that thread to go right in between the tan and the olive there and once you're happy with the position go ahead and tighten down sweep it out of the way and a couple of turns right in front should kind of lock it into place now I'm not overly worried I'm not taking a bunch of wraps of thread there because don't worry Mr. Zappa Gap is going to make a visit and then their UV is going to come and visit this fly which locks everything in place and is going to help and make sure it doesn't rotate so let's go ahead and uh, put the afterburners on here we're going to add the other another piece of olive about a two inch piece get that thread right in there close try to get in between although I didn't just do it perfectly but again no big deal move it into position kind of pull it tight and then give my final tight down move it back and out of the way and a couple of wraps to kind of secure it you want to make sure that you you get that nice separation so you get some banding which gives it this really variegated modeled look I put my next piece of tan in there one second wrap kind of pull it into position tight and 
couple of security wraps right in front. You might get some of these stray fibers, just kind of trim them, get them out of the way. And then I'm right up behind the lead eye. Um, it might not look like enough room, but you'll be amazed at how much stuff you can jam in there. So I'm going to come right behind the lead eye, jam it down in there, and then get your wrap. Get your wrap coming this way. So we're kind of figure eighting. Boom. Pull it into position and then give my final tight down. Got some strays there. Let's get them out of the way. And a couple of security wraps in front. And there is the body of the crab. Notice I'm kind of pulling on that. If you're not perfectly uh, spaced here, now we're going to trim this thing to shape. So you'll notice on my fly, I'm a little bit shorter on this side than I am on this side. Um, that was just bad judgment there. But don't worry, we're going to trim that to shape. This one should be about perfect. We'll trim a little more off on here. Um, now, I go ahead and finish this fly. I bring the thread in front of the eye now. Just take a couple of wraps. There actually, believe it or not, there's probably enough uh, zappa gap there that's still a little wet. It probably grabbed that thread. But then here's my uh, my saltwater half hitch tool. I, I've had this. I've probably had this thing for 25 years, maybe maybe more. I was working at Streamside Outfitters and uh, uh, down in Cincinnati, and a guy came in, and this is an uh, like some sort of uh, banister. Thing that he found at Lowe's or uh, some hardware store uh, and it turns out it's the absolute perfect half hitch tool for big saltwater flies. Uh, obviously not something you're going to typically find in a fly shop. They do make some some big half hitch tools uh, but this thing is just really neat. It fits in my hand grade. One, two, I go around that tool twice, slide it over the eye of the hook. Again, You've seen me do this before. It's, uh, there's another tutorial on finishing a fly using a half hitch, but it's real easy. I go around the tool once, I go around the tool twice, I slide this right out of the eye of the hook, which makes this super cool, it fits just perfect, and then I slide it down, get it nice and tight, and then I'm gonna trim my thread. And we're done with the thread, and now the rest of this fly is just finishing gluing the heck out of it so it all stays in place and it makes it much more durable and then we're going to uh, the last step is going to be to trim it okay so as stated before i take my zappa gap and i'm going to come right down the middle right down the spine of this fly and i'm going to hit those thread wraps okay making sure that i don't i don't get too much of the strays in the way so I come right down the spine of this fly, and then I bleed it up onto the lead eye. And I, I, I'm going to kind of pull on those fibers to separate them out. And give that just a minute or two to dry. At this stage of the game, while the zappa gap is drying, you can go ahead and make your trim. Now, I, I want this fly to be a uh, pretty big profile. These, uh, especially the big redfish down in Louisiana, they're looking for big meals, okay? So I want this to be, be a pretty hefty crab, uh, bigger than average. Um, the other thing, too, is um, the way I tied this fly, you'll notice that I've got the, the black back to this is on the top, whereas you would think that that lead eye is going to cause the fly to ride hook up. And it typically doesn't. If I leave the body wide enough, it kind of acts as a fan and it prevents this fly from fl flipping over. I prefer to have a redfish fly um, with the hook down because uh, I'm usually not getting near the bottom with this fly. They come up and grab it before it ever gets near the bottom. So I'm going to now take my curved scissors. Uh, these are the Dr. Slick, uh, I think the most aggressive curve that they make. And I'm simply going to come in. Actually, let's, let's do this. I'll just take it out of the vise for the time being. I'm going to grab onto the hook. 
and I just make, make a nice rounded cut to this. Okay, and now flip it over. Just get everything nice and neat and arranged properly. And you should be able to kind of eyeball it so that you get a similar length, which I didn't do a good job of. I could still take a little bit more off here on this side. This was the longer side as I tied those fibers in. One thing you can do to help also is I kind of, I'll kind of flatten the materials out, making sure that you don't glue your fingers to the fly. Kind of flatten those out, it makes it easier to trim, gives you a, a neater trim. And I'll round that front close to the eye a little bit better. Let's get that a little bit better. Round that a little bit more. That should be about right. He's he's a big one. That's a big crab, but that's not that's not a horrible thing. Hopefully, it'll catch a big fish. Okay. Now, last step. Put it back in the vise. I'm putting it in upside down. I'm going to come in with my Loon UV Clear Five finishes the thin formula. I like it because it penetrates a little bit more and I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of just put right again. This is the belly of the fly now. And I just run this along the spine which helps kind of lock those materials in and run that so it all kind of bleeds right up into the lead eyes. I'm going to take my UV curing light, hit that up really good. That sets it up, cures it, doesn't take very long, just a few seconds with the light. Then I'm going to flip her over and run right on top of the zappa gap, right along that spine. You can be kind of generous with this. It seeps down in there and run it right up over top of the lead eye I go ahead and kind of seal the whole thing that just that just locks everything in there locks it to the lead eye just gives it a lot more durability less chance that these fibers are going to pull out or come out of place or the fact that this thing is going to rotate and then I'll hit it up with my UV curing light just a couple seconds and that should be it. It's pretty well set up already. And so there you have the uh, plantation crab. Just deadly on redfish. But I'm starting to get a lot of people that are telling me that they're using it for a variety of, of stuff, including a couple guys said they used it on permit recently uh, down in Belize and did really well. So uh, thanks for watching as usual. Stay tuned. We got a lot in store for you as always. And uh, be sure to hop on over to our blog. Uh, where we'll post the recipe to this fly along with links to where you can get all the materials, okay? So thanks for checking us out. Have a good one.